So hello, uh, thank you for coming to our presentation. Uh, we're going to talk about exploiting the IoT hub, which includes attacking the smart home by compromising IoT devices and some countermeasures for this attack. And I know that the IoT village is also running Jared track and Syria track, and maybe this talk is helpful for who, those who are participating in the tracks. So uh, my name is Huan Lee, and I'm a graduate student of HHL lab at Korea University. And I like to play CDF, and I'm currently participating in DEF CON CDF final as DEF CON root team. And I've been researching on open source software targeted fuzzing and contributing to software security by reporting the found box, and I got some CVEs. And I'm also interested in embedded security such as IoT and SCADA and so forth. And we're also a mentee of Best of the Best, also known as BOB program which is a cybersecurity expert educating platform in Korea. Hello, my name is Chang Hyun. Uh, I'm working in a cybersecurity consulting team at the company UI Korea. I'm a graduate student of Songgyunkwan University, and I'm so excited, <laughs> but also a little nervous, giving my first overseas presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So now we'll introduce our agenda of this presentation. Uh, we'll briefly explain the structure of smart home after the introduction of this overall talk. And we'll analyze real world case study of threats that may arise in the smart home environment. Next, we'll conduct vulnerability analysis um, for different IoT devices. We found 20 vulnerabilities and we'll describe their types. And we'll suggest uh, feasible attack scenarios by training these vulnerabilities. Then we'll briefly outline the countermeasures required to prevent these attacks and conclude this talk. So now let's get started. In 2016, there were mail infections targeting IP cameras and home routers. The attack targeted against a large number of internet connected devices to form a bond network, which was used for large scale DDoS attack. In fact, the vulnerability used for this attack is quite simple, but fairly critical. Attackers can easily compromise the those devices just by performing the password for talent, which means that there was no security consideration in IoT devices. In 2017, a new Internet Things bond network called Persiri has been discovered targeting over 1,000 IP current models. The use vulnerability for this attack was command injection with authentication bypass, and approximately 120,000 IP cameras were found vulnerable. However, the worst is uh, many of these vulnerable users didn't recognize that their IP cameras were exposed to the internet. There are also cases of attacks on Zipon routers, uh, which are used widely in the world. Uh, even the exploit codes were released on the exploited website. This attack consists of only two vulnerabilities as well. Command injection and authentication bypass were needed to compromise the routers. Likewise, attackers can download and execute the malware on the device and build up sensible network to fully take control of the devices remotely. So now let's focus on the security of smart home. You know, the IoT hub which connects all the smart things in the same network area and communicate with remote server for management is considered as vital element in the in smart home environment. Uh, the hub device is also connected to the internet, which means it can be attacked as the previous IoT exploit cases if an externally accessible port is open or attackers can access to the same network area. In fact, Cisco Telus Intelligence uh, recently released vulnerability analysis results on Samsung SmartThings Hub device. Uh, the found vulnerabilities include command ejection, buffer flow, information leakage. And these vulnerabilities can be chained together to form a fully split code compromising the hub device. So as you know, the IoT threats are still ongoing and countermeasures for these threats should be considered urgently, I think. So we have conducted threat analysis and found many vulnerabilities for the health devices and made from different manufacturers. And we want to share the results from now on. Uh, yes, next I will talk about the structure of a smart home. According to this diagram, smart home services can be broken down into application, platform server, IoT hub, IoT things. There are times when there is no need for an IoT hub, 
but it is present in most smart homes. I will now explain more about the IoT Hub in detail. IoT Hub manages small devices in the smart home. It supports wireless protocol like the Z-Wave, Zigbee, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and etc. Also, to connect to a platform server, it uses diverse provisioning protocols. These protocols include TR069, MQTT, COAP, HTTP, on m 2 m and custom protocols. Yeah, next is the process of IoT Hub. Uh, the IoT Hub process is composed of four steps. Uh, first, the smart home service app will register the IoT Hub with the server. Uh, and second, the IoT Hub performs a user authentication through the server. Third, uh, the IoT Hub and the things uh, go through the process of pairing. Uh, finally, uh, the user is able to access the things through the application. So far, uh, we have covered the functions of the IoT Hub in smart homes. And now we will frame why we chose the IoT Hub as our target. Uh, our first reason is that once the IoT Hub is taken over, it would seem very possible to take over everything connected to the IoT Hub. Because of this, uh, there would be many possible scenarios uh, like louder exploitation. Uh, furthermore, uh, we imagine that through the exploitation of the IoT hub, we would be able to hack difficult wireless protocol such as the Z-Wave. Uh, lastly, our most important reason for choosing uh, our target as the IoT hub uh, <laughs> was for money, <laughs> and we are both. <laughs> now we will find out more about the smart home and IoT hub and the various various threat. This picture shows a threat that exists in smart home services. Uh, I have separate the threat into two graphs: uh, the external part, which is outside the home, and the internal part which is inside the home. Uh, I have only included the points uh, that were important in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the eastern section, the primary threat, uh, the supply chain attack of formula server, and the user as bypass, and many in the middle. Uh, and the eastern section, there are memory corruption, command injection, LPE, more, many in the middle, and very important threat is uh, remote control of things. And uh, now we will consider real example of a threat in each section. This case is a mobile application. An example of a threat uh, that can occur outside the, outside the home. Uh, one is able to control another devices using one's own application. There are two examples in the internal section. Uh, we will first examine the one concerning the IoT hub. Uh, recently, uh, many vulnerabilities have been discovered in the Samsung IoT hub. Uh, this including threat is RCE, DAS, information disclosure, and injection. This one was discovered in the Z, in the Z wave, uh, which is a wireless protocol. Uh, it is using the default encryption key. Uh, man in the middle uh, attack was possible, and now the first has been patched. Let us uh, take a closer look at the IoT hub to learn more precisely and carefully into potential threat of the IoT hub. Uh, we drew a threat model based on stride. Uh, as you can see in the flow diagram, um, the IoT hub indicated by red dot line uh, is connected to the other section, including the platform server, platform server, and uh, things. The IoT hub uh, was many processes and flows. Uh, process, process is a circle, uh, I mean, just line is flows. Uh, a lot of threat and attack vectors 
It's just because of this. Mm, yes, in the table below, which that is explained, uh, now we will talk about this in detail. So number 32 uh, is the potential lack of uh, info validation or poor pairing. We will now present a specific example of an instance when this threat was properly exploited. Uh, my partner, he won, uh, we take, we'll take it from here. Yeah, uh, so from now on, I'm gonna talk about vulnerability analysis for IoT Hub. Uh, we analyzed total four products. For each product, uh, the MCU architecture is classified as ARM and MIPS. Also, a JetWave, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and RF are used for wireless communication between IoT Hub and smart devices. And the IoT Hub transmits the status information of the device, such as firm information, certificates, and secret keys, and so on, to the server uh, via provisioning, so that the remote server can manage the device, such as automatic update, uh, device registration, connection, and communication with mobile application. So uh, company A uses uh, TR069 as provisioning, that is customer premises equipment, Wide Area Network Management Protocol, also known as CWMP. And this will be explained in more detail in later on, on our slide. And company C uses the MQTT protocol. MQTT is a machine-to-machine -machine and Internet of Things connectivity protocol. And it was designed as an extremely lightweight published subscribe messaging transport. To manage IoT of devices, uh, there are management services in the form of web application or something else. And when a web applications are usually developed based on open source such as well, Go Ahead, Pro Web Server, and Light HTTPD, but nowadays it seems to be a trend to customize the source or uh, develop the service directly from the manufacturer. In addition, we confirmed whether it can access to the debugging shell from remote or UART serial debugging port. As you can see, we can get a debugging shell by UART for all of the target devices. So uh, there are six steps to analyze IoT devices. First of all, extract the firmware. Uh, because the functions need to be analyzed are usually embedded in the firmware. Second, acquire a command shell for debugging. When you access the shell, you will notice which processes are running as a key role. Those will mainly handle lots of requests, and once the main binary is extracted, we can analyze the vulnerabilities and finally exploit them. There are roughly three ways to extract the firmware. Uh, through, pr through the provisioning, the remote server checks the firmware version of the hub device and performs automatic update when the version is not up to date. At the same time, the updated firmware URL information can be obtained and the firmware can be downloaded. Another way to get the firmware is using the UR debugging port. As you can run all commands in the debugging shell, uh, we can extract the desired binary through commands like tftp, ftpget, curl nc, and so on. Also, we can use JTAG instead of the UR, but we'll skip it because it's too expensive. So if the both methods are impossible, uh, there is a way to dump the flash memory directly. There are many ways to dumping the flash memory, but in our case, we used Arduino Uno dump, uh, Uno equipment. In addition, we can also remove the flash memory chip through the disordering for memory dump. Uh, next, we need to acquire a debugging shell, usually using the UR method. Sometimes it's easy to get a shell if telnet or SS port is open and it says it set as a default account, which can be easily cracked. And the Mirai attack exploited this type of vulnerability. And usually a login account is required, as you know, uh, when accessing via UR or telnet. Then how to log into the shell? Let's suppose the formula is extracted uh, already obtained in a different way then we can search the hard-coded password or check the password routine by reversing the relevant binary containing the login-related functions. Sometimes the password is written in the config file and we can find it easily. Then what if you cannot get the formula or do not know the password? Is there a way to log in even if U-Boot's bootlay option is set to zero? 
You know, U-Boot is a bootloader handling lots of tasks such as system initialization, current image loading and execution. Uh, normally if the boot delay option is set to enough, uh, we can get into bootloader prompt and change the kernel image booting option. But otherwise, we'll have to short the NAND flash chip. It's the principle that connection between ground pin and the particular pin of the NAND chip because it's a current image loading error and can lead to bootloader prompt. After entering bootloader prompt, uh, we can set boot ARGS options by adding init equal pin as a string and then reboot. Then we can get the UR debugging shell with the root account. Next, identify main process. Since the program startup commands are usually defined in the startup script file, uh, we can easily find the main process. The network status check command tells you which ports are open and which processes are running. There are five categories of vulnerabilities we have found. Uh, let's take a closer look at each one. When sending a payload to a web application, uh, it usually validates the session value and we can bypass the authentication with a simple URL tree. As you can see, uh, if the URL, if the requested URL ends in .css, .gif, .jpg, and etc., the function of validation for a session is not called, which means we can bypass authentication routine. In some cases, the program itself creates a session value with non-random. In this case, we can bypass the authentication by generating a forward session value. In fact, this is one of the vulnerabilities used in the recently released Jupyter router exploit. As you can see, the first vulnerability is authentication bypass. This was done by putting question mark images strings at the end of the URL. Attackers can, could easily bypass authentication by inserting certain keywords into the end of the URL and succeed in remote code execution with a second vulnerability, command ejection. The most common but fatal vulnerability is command ejection. The vulnerabilities could be implemented literally by inserting arbitrary commands into certain headers or parameters. This can be, uh, this can reliably execute tech codes without the need for bypassing mitigations like DP and AS at all. As you can see in the image, if you inject a command into a certain parameter, it is passed as an argument of the system function without sanitization, the resulting command ejection. So as you can see, one simple command ejection makes it possible to access to the system remotely. This is the most attractive vulnerability for attackers. Now, uh, this is the very typical vulnerability, buffer flow. In fact, many of the IoT devices we had analyzed didn't have secure coding applied. So we focused on the vulnerable functions like searching copy, sprint tab, mem copy, and so on to find buffer flow. As can be seen from the image below, the functions are used quite a lot. And on some devices, we could find functions that simply execute commands. This function is assumed to be used for debugging from the perspective of developer. However, it is considered as a backdoor from attacker's point of view. Unlike most cases, uh, in this picture, the name of the function is too clear that it is a backdoor. However, the function is usually hidden and some constraints should be met to execute commands. Uh, likewise, you can control the device very easily. As you can see, we inserted command creating directory on command parameter. Then we can create the directory successfully. Lastly, uh, local privilege escalation vulnerability. There are many ways to elevate privileges on Linux embedded systems. Sometimes in an embedded system, the privileges are separated as root and user so that certain processes run with normal user account. In the account access through talent is a, a normal user account. Elevation of privilege is required to execute more commands. Uh, instead of Linux current exploitation, we'll show you privilege escalation by using a logical bug, which is user own script file executed as root account. Uh, as you can see, the user account is Linaro. It's a normal account. 
And the rc.local file is a startup script that is executed with root permission. And it executes serial.sh file as a command. However, the serial.sh is a user owns file and can be modified as normal user account. If we insert a command to change the password of the root, ac root account into the serial.sh file, then we can access to the system with root account, root account successfully. Um, based on the found vulnerabilities, we can develop a final exploit. Buffer flow can be exploited to remote code execution. To do this, our technique and shellcode development are needed. So you can run shellcode by chaining three gadgets that control specific registers, get the address of the shellcode on the stack, and jump to the shellcode. This code is a reverse TCP connection shellcode for MISP's architecture that allows you to execute commands from a remotely connected server. So we have developed a complete exploit for company A hub product and we will demonstrate that we can fully take control of the hub device by combining the authentication bypass with buffer flow. So in first demo, we'll show you the company A's hub device is fully compromised by buffer flow and authentication bypass. So um, the left side is attacker side. So we have to open the port, a listening port from remote reverse TCP connection. And the right side is a teller session for checking the our exploit is success. And this is the UART debugging shell. Also checking the exploit Successibility. And the middle side is the uh, attacker side and execute the exploit code by setting target IP. The target IP is a web service uh, of the hub device, and we can get a remote shell. For a proof of concept, we create a flag pile as contents pwned. And as you can see, the flag file is created successfully and the content is the same. And also in the UART debugging shell. So uh, as you can see, uh, we can execute any commands as we want. So we compromise the hub device successfully. So now let's look at which attack scenarios, by, uh, scenarios are possible with the identify vulnerabilities. First, it is the scenario that controls the things. Uh, if an attacker gains control of a hub device, all IoT devices connected to the hub can be controlled. Usually, hubs and devices communicate wirelessly by Jetwave, GKB, and RF, but there is no authentication between them. So we can leverage these points to manipulate command packets to control devices or for status information. As you can see, the hub device recognizes the specific byte of the packet as control code. And based on this, it gives a certain command to the relevant devices. Also, if the main process is implemented as Java application, you can see that the payload is also sent in a specific format. So by delivering packets based on these formats, we can control the devices as we want. So this is a second demo. Uh, this is a door open sensor. Uh, in this demo, we will show that we can forge status information of the smart things, and it can lead to false information on mobile application. Uh, because the, comp the company only service for Korean customers, so the mobile application supports only Korea. So please understand that. And we have subtitle as English. So. Uh, as you can see, the application tells the door open sensor is open. However, if we send a packet that includes closed information for the sensor, then you can see that the application status information is just forced. But still, the door open sensor is open. And the next demo, we can disconnect the smart things by sending this connection packet to the hub device. So, yeah, 
as this uh, before demo, we can disconnect the device. And we can also control the smart bulbs. It's the Philips Hue Bridge and the smart light. If you compromise the hub device, you can analyze many command packets and send a uh, counter packet to the connected smart things. For the proof of concept, we developed a uh, Python script, yeah, to control the light bulb. At first, we can turn on the light. So, and also we can adjust the brightness of the light bulb. And so uh, if you set, oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, if you set the brightness as middle, the, the brightness will be dim. And also we can turn off the light. And we can flash the light bulb also. So this means we can control the device uh, as you want if you compromise the hub device. Then let's look at the cases of encrypted communication between the server and the hub. Since the up-to-date devices are communicating with servers as encrypted, as SSL or TLS, there's no useful information to be extracted in the case of man in the middle. However, one of the devices we have analyzed uses a scheme that the IoT hub itself generates uh, and stores the encryption key in the device, which means that the packet can be decrypted if the, if the hub is compromised. So we analyzed the encryption algorithm and found that it is ACE128 ECB mode. This is a symmetric key cipher, so the server and the hub share the same key. Coincidentally, there was a buffer flow vulnerability in the hub device, which we could take over the system and extract the 16 byte encryption key. So as you can see, the data area of the packet is encrypted. For proof of concept, AES 128 ECB mode integration algorithm was written in C code. And the corresponding message is decrypted by entering the extracted key values. This can be used as a scenario for disconnecting a hub device by sending a first information to the server. So my partner Chang Yan will talk continuously. Hi, I'm back. Uh, this scenario is the man in the middle. Uh, some ID hubs uh, uses TRO69 protocol for provisioning with the server. Uh, when the server and IoT, co IoT hub communicate, the HTTP response message is changed and exposing the hub's critical information. We will show the admin web password in the next demo. Uh, let see. Wait a minute. Oh, sorry. Yeah, edit. Uh, uh, the TR069 protocol is authenticated via two HTTP request with the server. Uh, after authentication, change the HTTP response. This point. Uh, yeah. Change uh, just as the server ask for information. This will is how is disclosed the pro, uh, the admin web password and the string is more sorry. Uh, this is uh, a web admin password and we drop the packet. It's so simple, many in the middle demo. Uh, these vulnerabilities may be used in Burnet uh, because its IoT devices are connected to internet, which means that those can be used for Burnet. A uh, lot of Burnet have a code since the Mirai Burnet case. Uh, yes, let me take a closer uh, look at the IoT Burnet in detail. First, IoT Burnet is increasing. Upon that, such as Virai, Hajime, and the Moon continue to be found. Last year, many IoT malware uh, were discovered. Second, the IoT attack methods include zero day on the admin web, one day on the open source, 
and this configuration like the same password, default password. And so the attack purpose is evolving. In the beginning, uh, IoT botnet used the DOS, but today use, used as PDOS, ransomware, and mining pool. Finally, many countries are uh, causing damage, like the Mirai botnet. So how about the IoT hub we found? Uh, we search, we search it uh, through Shoda. We haven't found much, but uh, 70,000 devices has been exposed. <coughs> also, two, uh, the vulnerabilities of IoT Hub can be used as a mining pool. There are cases where Bitcoin was mined through OpenWRT Premier. Of course, you need hardware support for mining. Uh, it is just one of the many scenarios. Uh, two weeks ago, the article came out. It was mining through micro thick devices. According to this article, there was a mining code on the admin web page of micro thick devices. Like this example, mining pools can damage devices or users. Uh, maybe the IoT hub is also possible. The final parts of our presentation will did. IoT security. How should we secure IoT? Uh, I think, just, just I think, there are three necessary steps to follow. Uh, device security, uh, compliance, and detect of anomalies and threat. The first is device security. Uh, each device needs each, uh, each unique password, share, admin web, and the Wi-Fi password must all be different, uh, each following password rules. Debugging ports like UART, JTAG must be disabled. Uh, for codes uh, developed uh, individually, uh, secure coding is absolutely necessary. And if we have an open source, it must always be updated to uh, its latest version. Uh, we are able to easily carry out our analysis because three out of the four corporation had not encrypted in their respect permits. And then even if the hacker obtained the permit, the file system is, will not easily be obtained. Second, about compliance, uh, IoT security guideline made by international organization must be followed. It is good to keep this guideline as a reference because they explain the security of the IoT ecosystem. A uh, good guideline to follow it is NIST IRA200 made by NIST. Uh, but we should not stop here. Uh, there are the guidelines are of minimum, and security must constantly be maintained. Third, one must be already uh, one must be ready to deal with anomalies and threat detection. To detect anomalies and threat, one must do the follow, uh, following uh, data collection, uh, intelligence analysis, uh, automated response, and visualization. So, is conclusion of our target, uh, uh, our talk, sorry, <laughs> uh, our talk. To wrap up uh, our presentation, we found many different threats the IoT hub, and smart home um, services are uh, increasing due to technology like the voice recognition, AI, and machine learning. Furthermore, the IoT hub is evolving to the forms of AI speakers and word paths. Uh, this is good news for us. We have plenty of research to do in the IoT security. Uh, we will threaten more findings and research about security in the future. Uh, here are the reference and special thanks to Anastra, Singi, Mongi, and Boombom Park. Thank you for our, thank you for listening to our presentation. Uh, if you have any question, uh, we are happy to take them. When you come to us, uh, please. <laughs> yeah, we are always open. Thank you.